Happy New Year's! I hope you all have had a great Christmas and New Year's celebration. I'm now back with a new topic, Lambda Snapstart. Snapstart is a feature that was released during the 2022 reInvent, which I was so fortunate to attend in person, and Snapstart was quite a hot topic there. I'm currently in the process of making my summary video, but for now, here is another technical demo of a cool new feature. So what is Snapstart? It is a new way of running Java applications in AWS Lambda, which almost eliminates the long init process, which has plagued Java developers on AWS Lambda since forever. A big drawback if you for some reason use Java in an AWS Lambda function has been that the cold start was quite slow. And a big contributor to that is the JVM. The JVM takes some time to start, and when Lambda spins up new instances, the first requests to these instances could have more than a second in response time. And that could for many be a deal breaker. Of course, you could just use another programming language, such as Python or Node, but some prefer Java. So, what Snapstart does is to initialize your Lambda function the moment you publish a new version of that function. Lambda then takes a snapshot of the initialized micro VM containing the memory and disk state. It also encrypts it and stores the snapshot for extremely low latency access. When you then invoke the function the first time or when it is scaling up, New execution environments start from the cached snapshot instead of initializing them from scratch. This is all very nice, but there are also some limitations to keep in mind. Snapstart doesn't support provisioned concurrency. You cannot use ARM architecture, you can only use the x86-64 architecture. Lambda Extensions API is also not available, neither is Amazon EFS. X-Ray is also not possible to use, or a thermal storage greater than 512 megabytes. If you wonder about which Java version is supported, for now that is Java 11. There are some facts you need to consider when working with Snapstart. Since the normal init phase of a Lambda execution environment is already done before you trigger the Lambda function, things that happen outside the Lambda handler method, like uniqueness, initiating network connections, setting up temporary data, etc., will not run more than once. This can also be an issue without Snapstart, since execution environments can be reused. But with Snapstart, each and every request make use of an environment that is already initiated. In other words, you should probably not depend on network connections such as to a database, which has been initiated before the execution of your Lambda handler method. There are some exceptions though. Network connections that an AWS SDK establishes will in most cases automatically resume. I'll provide a link in the description regarding best practices for other types of connections. So what about pricing? Well, there are no additional costs for Snapstart itself, except that you will pay for the restore duration or the price for starting a new micro VM containing your snapshot, which occurs on cold starts. Now, over to the demo. I will create two versions of a Lambda function, one without Snapstart enabled and one with, to see if there is any significant reduction in the cold start execution time. In this demo, I will assume that you are somewhat familiar with the basic concepts of AWS Lambda. So if you're not, go ahead and watch my video linked above before you continue with this demo. For the Java code, I have just made use of a really simple example from Baldung.com, 
or however you pronounce that correctly. I will of course provide a link in the description if you want to try out this code yourself. I have already built a jar file from this code, which I'll make use of later on. Now open the AWS console. Keep in mind that Snapstart isn't available in every region yet, so I will in this example make use of EU West 1 or Ireland where Snapstart is available. Go over to AWS Lambda and click on Create function. I'll call mine Snapstart. Remember to choose Java 11 as runtime. This is currently the newest Java runtime available for AWS Lambda. As mentioned earlier, for architecture you are limited to the x86-64 architecture. If you want to enable Snapstart, that is. I'll let everything else be as default and hit Create function. Now that the function is created, we need to upload some code. Click on Upload From, and here choose Zip or Jar. Then I will choose the jar file I talked about earlier. Once it's uploaded, I'll update the handler to point to the correct class in my Java code. Under Runtime Settings, hit Edit, and put in the class name. Lastly, hit save. Now publish a new version of this Lambda function. Once this version 1 is published, let's create a custom event to test our Lambda function. Open the test tab, call the test some random name, and put in some event data. My Lambda function only supports strings as the event type so I'll just provide a random string value. Save the test for later and hit test to invoke our function. If we take a look at the details here, we can see that the init duration was 484 milliseconds and the duration was 93 milliseconds. Keep in mind that this is a so-called cold start, but still this is quite slow and it could have been much worse if, for example, I had a larger code base and more libraries imported. Now, what happens to the cold start if we enable snap start? Let's do that now. Exit version 1 of the Lambda function and open the configuration tab. Under general configuration, hit edit. Under snap start, Select Published Versions, and hit Save. Before we continue, if you like my videos and want to learn more about serverless and AWS, remember to subscribe to my channel and smash that bell icon so you don't miss any future videos. Next, publish a new version of the Lambda function. This will take some time since a whole new snap start of a virtual machine has to be generated. Once complete, let's try the same test again. Hit test and open the details. Here we can see that the init phase has been replaced with restore duration. This is definitely quite a lot faster than the previous init phase which was almost half a second. The duration is almost the same as before, but this is as expected. Keep in mind that this is still a cold start, and if we try to hit test again, we can see the result for a warm start. Now the restore duration is gone, and duration is less than 2 milliseconds. I guess these results speak for themselves. I have tested this a few times now, and quite consistently, the init duration or now restore duration has gone down to a fifth of what it was without snap start. So to conclude, if you have to use Java as your programming language for AWS Lambda functions, then this could really help reduce your cold starts. Also, 
it is important to note that Java is actually quite fast once it is initiated, as we have seen with the warm start test. Also, you don't need to take my word for it. I will put in a few links in the description to articles discussing that Java can be quite fast within an AWS Lambda function. All that's left to say now is thank you for watching and happy coding!